came on holidays to Australia uh, originally, and I'm a complete cliche. I then decided, oh, this is such a great country. I'd love to come back for a year. <laughs> and so I did and moved to Bondi, <laughs> which adds to the cliche of um, being English there. Um, and I just loved it. And one of the big things that I loved so much about it was that healthy lifestyle. I was just mesmerized by, you know, getting up at six o'clock in the morning and recognizing that half of Bondi was already up and exercising and training. And it was a real energy within that. It wasn't Mm. sort of a a forced, you should be doing this. It just Mm. actually felt, I felt like I sort of gravitated towards that and I'd Mm -hmm. never had that before. Mm. So that was, that was very exciting. And that kind of, um, from a, from a, health point of view that was my first sort of spike in my own personal health and then later down the line I did my own coaching qualifications and that sort of it all just started bubbling up with the daily guru all these different pieces of the puzzle coming together recognizing okay I think I think I want to work in this field and I think I want to be sharing this stuff you know that I've had this great experience and I want to do that more. That sounds wonderful and very inspiring. Can you tell us a little bit about your coaching qualifications? Because as I understand, even though you became a coach, it was also a very conscious decision for you not to actually work specifically as a coach. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yes, I took my coaching qualification and I did it in NLP, Neuro Linguistical Programming, excuse me, and um, hypnotherapy. Mm -hmm. And I, I did those actually at the time when I was working in marketing and events to become a better manager, I wanted to understand my team better so that I could get better results with them Mm -hmm. uh, and help them with their own progression. That was already something that was showing up a lot in my life. That area of helping people understand their potential or their unique qualities and how to sort of um, access that and nurture that rather than Um, what often was I was seeing a lot of in the corporate environment was that real cookie cutter of you must have this 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 in order to be successful in Mm -hmm. your role and and if if those members of my team didn't necessarily have those you know three qualities they were deeming themselves as you know a failure and and that was really disappointing for me so I went and did my coaching qualification and again, it was just open. I, my eyes were open to this whole new industry that I felt that my, in, by nature, I had already been exploring a lot of that stuff with, mm-hmm. you know, reading things. But I just didn't realize that actually there's, there are coaching techniques that you can help people with. There are patterns and traits and rituals that we follow that mm. we we don't necessarily recognize the ones that support us and those that don't. So that was that was very exciting for me and I did what probably most coaches do and I then went off to all my wonderful obliging friends and said if anyone needs any coaching I'd be so happy to help and I started (laughs) practicing and it was really wonderful and I started getting other people come to me um which was great but quite quickly I realized that that kind of one-on-one coaching or if I'd moved to the sort of group coaching space, that wasn't really lighting me up. I I loved the industry. I loved what it was offering, but I knew that wasn't where I was meant to work in this space. I totally understand. I totally understand. It's why I I can't teach public classes anymore. I, I used to love it. Yes. But then I thought, oh, I just don't feel like an hour is enough time to go really deep with people, um, especially when it's such a mixed class. The capacity to hold that space yes, yeah, can be a little bit challenging. What was it specifically about that one-on-one coaching or that specific type of group coaching that you didn't love, that didn't light you up? Um, I think it was... I, I was always lit up by the results for the person. That mm-hmm. was really exciting. And I actually loved the techniques. I think it was more a case of I just wanted more people to know about it. Yep. So instead of working in that kind of one-to-one setup, I, I wanted more to to be saying to people, there's a whole industry that offers this. That's what lit me up really. Mm. Like when I thought about creating the platform Mm -hmm. where I was 
sort of shining a light on this industry to say, for those of you who don't know, we're not aware that this exists, you need to be aware that this is this is out there. And, I, and that's not just the coaching. That mm-hmm. was by that point I started exploring for myself, you know, the naturopathy, the kinesiology, the, mm-hmm. all of those different fantastic therapists and, mm-hmm. and approaches. <clears throat> that's what made me realize actually creating an awareness about all of these fantastic skills or services that can help us understand ourselves better. Um, that, that's what I loved. Mm. And that's specifically why I chose to um, speak to you about the aura because of how expansive your mindset is and your desire to to not only be a lighthouse but help others become a lighthouse as well, which is exactly what the aura is all about. Yes, yeah. Well, that's that's really kind of you. I don't think you recognize it in yourself. You just know what mm. makes you excited. And, and when you're, as you would 100% appreciate, when you are a business owner, you need to have a lot of motivation and excitement yeah. about what you're creating because yeah. there's a lot of stuff that's not so much fun. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that gets you through it, that um, keeping keeping a great reminder in your life as to why you started all of this. Yeah, I <clears throat> think you're absolutely right, especially when we meet people and we have job envy because they're either an author or a stylist or a coach or a business owner or a yoga teacher. And people often say, well, I'd love to do what you do. And I often want to say, oh, if you had any idea how much time I really spend in front of the computer. Yes. Yeah. yeah.